Um, I'd like to first thank everyone and welcome uh, to the CABA quarterly CHC webinar meeting. Uh, this is open to uh, everyone and, uh, and all to attend. My name is Marta Kliptoska and I am the program officer at CABA. I'll be emceeing the meeting slides. Um, Greg, would you like to begin with the agenda today? Sure, thanks Marta. Um, so here, here's the agenda. I won't be doing a, a like, uh, we won't be doing a formal roll call just because we had, uh, I think there was over 60 or 70 that uh, the registered for the, for the meeting. Um, but we'll go over, uh, the, there'll be a welcome and introductions, a little bit about the, the Connect at Home Council and, uh, and, and what it's all about. Uh, there'll be some administrative work uh, on, number, on point number three where we're approving the past minutes. Um, there'll be an update on some of the research that we're doing and uh, have a, a near completion and the one that's coming up in the future on some landmark research project with the Connected Home Council. Um, then we'll have our, our keynote presentation for about 30 minutes, maybe even maybe even 40 minutes or so from uh, Andreas uh, Carvalho from Texas State University to talk about uh, inter introducing uh, a, a consortium with, with Texas State. Uh, and there'll be some slides and a presentation uh, opportunity for, for Q&A at, at that keynote as well. And um, then there'll be a white paper update from uh, Ken Wax, and then there'll be some uh, new business and uh, some announcements of some uh, um, past events and upcoming events, and then an and then adjournment. Um, and, and those that are staying for the keynote, feel free to stay for the rest of the meeting, and uh, we'll be starting the, the keynote shortly. But uh, with, with, that, with that, I'll pass it off to... To Charles to, to to chair the meeting, talk a little bit about uh, the CHC. Well, hi, welcome everybody, and good morning. Welcome to the CHC. I've been involved with the CHC for uh, a little over a year now, and uh, the work we do here, as you all are probably familiar, looking at the trends in connecting homes, uh, connected multi-unit uh, dwellings, looking at first of all the trends that we see there, the technology trends, and also advocating for more connected homes. And, and certainly in the work my company does, we're very interested in, you know, the fusion of data and power. That's a lot of the trends that we're looking at here. You can see the different uh, chair persons here. Uh, Eric Harper, first of all, from Snap SnapOne, uh, Byron B. Miller from Semtech, Jim Hunter from Delos, and myself from uh, South Bar. Anything else you'd like to add, Greg? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, no, that's 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 about it. We just uh, we do we do these meetings quarterly and we record them. So if uh, if you couldn't make it, the slides will be available on the website and uh, and other resources will be available on the website after the call as well. Certainly, and uh, now the next step um, before we get into some of the research updates and the keynote, just to uh, approve our past CHC minutes, um, I would like to make a call to a motion to approve these minutes. Would anyone second the motion? David Katz, I second the motion. Approve the minutes. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, hearing none opposed, the motion passes and the minutes are approved. So I think we can go to the next one. Uh, we'll talk about our research uh, initiative for the connected home and AI. So a little bit about how we selected this topic. This was, uh, we, we asked CABA, we asked the Connected Home Council, uh, different topics were selected. We had three topics as finalists, and we selected that and sent that to the CABA board. Um, the CABA board looked at these, and we selected, finally, the Connected Home and AI for our uh, 2021 research topic. So from that, then, as you all know, we uh, contract to different research firms to actually do these projects for us. Uh, we selected Harbor Research. And this project, it's over $70,000 worth of research. Um, and you can become a funder, a member for $5,000, $10,000, or $15,000, depending on your funding level. If you are a funder, you receive the full research. And right now, we have five funders. So thank you very much to Automated Logic, Carrier, Brown Newton, Residio, and Snap One for signing up on funding on this. There is more. Uh, opportunity to become a funder uh, at silver titanium level. They're still available. Um, and we expect the final report, I believe, Greg, in a, in a few weeks. And uh, anyone interested in becoming a funder, please contact either Marta or Greg.
Great. Okay. This is the, the, the next landmark research project for 2022. Uh, this is the, the last item before the, the keynote, but, uh, this is the we, we basically surveyed some of the, the research firms and some of our members and some of the CHC and uh, and we and we narrowed it down to this topic and we, we talked about it at the board and we're, we're developing a research prospectus right now so connected home or smart home and, and the energy management uh, um, it would be the next landmark research project uh, we're working out all the details of what that would look like and uh, basically we'll be starting that uh, fairly soon. So one of the, one of the key things is, is uh, while there's many technologies have been around for a long time and the, many of the advances have been made in sort of grid, battery and solar and uh, EV and, uh, but uh, this uh, energy management in the smart home is, uh, is sort of uh, lagging a little bit and we really, really to see where those opportunities are. And I think that uh, judging from the feedback from a lot of the research organizations and the, and the interest out there in the industry, this is the, 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 the hot topic right now in, in, in research. So um, this is what we are looking to start it. Probably the RFP will go out likely uh, next week or the week after, and then uh, we'll be uh, available to uh, to try to get funders for this research project. So it's so going to be the same as the, the the landmark research before, where it's a collaborative funding effort, and uh, and likely the, the the funding levels will be the same around the five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars to participate and and to share approximately a seventy thousand uh, dollar research project at the end of the day. Um, if you have any um, uh, feedback on, on this topic, feel free to send me an email at walker at and uh, we can see about how to address that and get it incorporated into the research prospectus. But uh, it'll be changing and, and, and with input from the steering committee and, and, uh, and providing a little bit more granularity into the topic uh, um, later on down the road. Thanks. Greg, I believe uh, David has a question. Yeah, Greg, is energy management going to include, uh, you know, the new resiliency, the grid connected home uh, as it relates to, you know, uh, battery storage, things like that, or is it just managing energy? Uh, both. It's going to be more of a sort of a broad based topic. And uh, I think at, at the end of the day, we'll 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 work with the steering committee to decide where exactly they're going to focus some of the efforts in. Um, but it would definitely include both. Okay, um, because you know that we like even in Canada, we're going to give people five thousand dollars to improve their their homes, and so many of those are including putting solar on the roof and things that you know Ken and I are looking at. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's going to look at some so like along like solar and uh, and EV and uh, and and basically how that relates to the home and then how to manage it at the same time. Uh, it won't be just on the management side of things, but it'll be looking at the whole landscape is what I anticipate, but it could, things could change when the bids come back in. So we, we do a really a 10,000 foot level research prospectus. And then when the bids come back in from the research firms, they narrow it down a bit. And then when we start with the steering committee meetings, they narrow the, the scope even further uh, to even the point where who, who do you want to get interviewed? Who do you want to get surveyed? What are the questions and things like that? So, um, we're, we're, we're at the high level right now, um, but I anticipate it would, it would definitely address uh, both. Good. And, and even indoor air quality is maybe one of my, uh, you know, clients would be interested in joining. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. On the large building side, we're doing healthy buildings and, uh, um, and indoor air quality is the, as the topic for, for 2022. So we're doing uh, the same thing with that, uh, on, on the large building side with the indoor air quality. Uh, Greg, this is Ken Wax. If I might comment that I am in the, I've been writing a series of articles for the CABA Journal on uh, st the development of international standards to support home energy management. Uh, I believe two have been published, and I've got another seven, so it'll be running all year long in the CABA Journal. That's that's excellent. Yeah. So I, I think it's I think. It shows the uh, it shows the interest in the topic for sure, but we can utilize some of those resources in in the development of this.
other uh, questions or comments. But if you have any other uh, interest or questions, uh, interest in joining the, the the research or interested in getting more information, uh, send uh, send me an email at uh, walker at kappa dot org. Jim. Thank you, Greg. Um, today we have a wonderful presentation um, from an industry, um, I would say elite. Um, so let's let's give you a quick introduction. So Andres Carvalho is going to share his work. He leads a multidisciplinary uh, industry research consortium um, called the Connected Infrastructure for Education, Demonstration, and Applied Research. That's C-I-E-D-A-R for short. Uh, it's based out of Texas State University. Current efforts focus on development of nine smart living labs, including a smart buildings and infrastructure lab, a smart homes lab that focus on construction, materials, sensors, IoT, energy, water, and wastewater innovation capabilities. Andre uh, is the founder and CEO of CMG Consulting, a strategic planning and advisory firm focused on smart grids, smart utilities, smart cities, smart buildings, everything smart. Additionally, Andre has three key roles at Texas State University. He's a Materials Applications Research Center uh, fellow, which is Mark. He's professor of innovation in the College of Science and Engineering, teaching uh, EE 4357 and EE 4375 and EE 4376. He's a co-director of the Connected Infrastructure for Education, Demonstration and Applied Research. Uh, and he's known as the godfather of smart grid for designing, building the very first smart grid in the US at Austin Energy. He's author of the Advanced Smart Grid, has published 41 titles in, in power engineering, telecom IoT, and building technologies. He's received 36 industry awards since 2005, has held C-suite and senior executive roles at Austin Energy, Philips Electronics, DEC, Borland, and six IoT telecom and, and internet startups. Started his career as a Windows product manager at Microsoft and at Austin Energy. He was a CIO and CTO that led a storied $4 billion development of technology, deployment of technology, and 2,500 projects, 98% on time and on budget transformations from 2003 to 2010. Andre, this is really impressive. We're really looking forward to your presentation. Take it away. Oh, th thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. And, um, there's a bunch of you that I happen to know, and it's been a long journey, 36 years uh, working in four industries, and now I'm um, still consulting at CMG, but half of my time, uh, uh, I'm spending it at Texas State now, and uh, now I'm turning into my fifth career, an academic, and it's been in quite a journey the last three years. And so what we're trying to do here is really build uh, next generation uh, labs. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, so real quick, a little bit about Texas State. I joke about uh, as of being here now, um, you know, eight years involved with the university in one way or another, as an early faculty and advisor in the accreditation program in engineering and such, that we are one of the best kept secrets in Texas because uh, we don't have a great football team. So for those of you who are football fans like I am, uh, it's, uh, you know, we have uh, 1,800 faculty, 40,000 students, and over 5,100 acres of land housing two campuses and multiple research labs. We have a very in interesting profile. We are highly a minority university, very, looked very much like Texas, uh, and we're a 10-year Hispanic serving institution. Next slide. So we sit in this, uh, what's called the Texas Innovation Corridor. And a lot of you will start hearing this uh, moniker more and more. This was a moniker created a while back by the head of economic development at the state of Texas, uh, sort of equivalent to Silicon Valley, Research Triangle Park and things like that. And it really covers the, the, the geography from Round Rock where Dell's headquarters is all the way to San Antonio. We happen to have a campus in San Marcos and a campus in Round Rock. Let's go to the next slide. So land is a big deal in terms of building things. 
uh, and universities in Texas are very lucky to have a lot of land. Uh, Ron Rock campus is 100 acres. Our San Marcos campus is 500 acres. Star Park, which is basically our uh, dedicated park for uh, third party partners to come and put boots on the ground, build their own R&D center if they want to and sponsor their own building if they want to, uh, has 100 acres. Uh, we have two ranches because all the universities in Texas have ranches. Uh, so we have the Freeman Ranch, 4,200 acres. Uh, and the Mueller Ranch, 160 acres. And then we have something called the Alert Center, which is 65 acres. And it's a, uh, we're very proud of this uh, center of excellence. Alert stands for Advanced Law Enforcement Rapid Response Training Center. This is the gold standard funded by the Justice Department to the tune of $10 million per year, where all the SWAT teams and FBI teams and Secret Service teams in America get training on mass shooting scenarios. So imagine, you know, uh, Clean Eastwood, James Bond type uh, target environments of all kinds, multi buildings and such. And uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're taking them digital now. Next slide. So as uh, Charles said, uh, uh, connected infrastructure for education, demonstration, applied research, a mouthful. Uh, it's uh, CEDAR as an acronym. It's a consortium member base for applied research. That's the key thing. It's focused on industry, uh, even though we'll work with all kinds of federal, state, and local agencies, but the, the real focus is industry. Uh, and we are building nine living labs. And the theme about what drives uh, the creation of the labs or the reimagining of the innovation is the whole journey of digitalization, decentralization, and decarbonization. Now, in order to do that, obviously, the university is very focused on uh, transforming how we teach our students and what we teach them and how we graduate them with hands-on experience in all the labs that we have. And so we have created some, something called technology enhanced infrastructure, which is being used uh, in the College of Science and Engineering to start with. And pretty soon will be incorporated in all the other schools, business, liberal arts and the like. Uh, and the notion is that you know professionals of all kind, not just STEM professionals, are really more and more needing to live in a world of digitalization, decentralization and decarbonization. And what does that mean to them? What does that mean to the language, the skill sets, and the thought process of how they create value into their disciplines? So next slide. So this is what TEC, I mean, TEI looks like. So you can put anything on that metal bubble, and it could be any piece of infrastructure. It could be, you know, your desk, your chair, your car, anything. And so if you add sensors to it, if you add connectivity to it, now start tracking it. Uh, there you are, uh, you, you know, you're in the beginnings of digitalization. Now, for anybody listening to this, this is a no-brainer. You all live in this world all together. But if you think about the verticals that we're going after, many of those verticals, including the actual construction of homes and buildings, it's far from being there. And actually, many of those uh, verticals uh, that are surrounding the construction world like energy and water live in a reality of uh, you know 50 to 80 year old same same business model same technologies and so on so we're really pushing hard to transform what we teach so next slide and the goal of cedar is focus on research and development to really help members that join on the validation, evaluation, and development of existing, emerging, or new technologies. Our approach to everything we do when you get onboarded as a member is um, you can be a founding member, a general member, an associate member. There's a schedule of a revenue base uh, a, a matrix for that. And you bring in a set of challenges that you may have as a buyer, or as a seller of technology in terms of your innovation journeys. And we tend to want to map that out, not only to the STEM disciplines, you know, engineering, physics, chemistry, math, and so on, but also to all the other soft 
um, if you will, skill sets and disciplines, right? Things like design and business and psychology and communications and so on. So we look at our portfolio of faculty and their expertise and try to map them or match them to the needs of your entire uh, list of uh, concerns and challenges that you bring to us as a member. And then we uh, you know, use uh, the right principal investigators to drive specific projects with student body to as the workforce. Next slide. So our key benefits are, again, we are, we discuss ourselves and, and try to educate everybody that we are a very dynamic next generation, perhaps first of its kind, r and marketplace of solutions solving real life problems where buyers and sellers can come together and collaborate like never before in a large scale, huge playground that covers 700 acres today. Um, our faculty and students deliver the world-class solutions at a, and on average at a 50% less labor cost than you would if you were doing it in-house with your own FTEs. So, and then everything around CEDAR has been already pre-negotiated uh, for the university, uh, including intellectual property rights, co-creation and things like that. And the, the range of, uh, on, the, on the IP uh, percentage ranges from one to 5%, depending on your membership level. So no higher than 5% and as low as 1%. Um, buyers or sellers collaborate, or they can also, you know, uh, take a, a portion, uh, um, uh, an amount of their uh, R&D allocated funding to do their own R&D with their own IP uh, and so on. And again, one of the key things about what we're doing that is probably very unique is not only are we collaborating with the world-class companies that you all know that make great products, but we are uh, uh, recruiting aggressively cities, utilities, electric water and gas and wastewater and um, enterprises that are large scale users of technology. Next slide. So we have a, a great advisory board which contains the executives uh, leadership at SEMI North America. Most of you know that, what that is in the Industrial Internet Consortium. I would hope that many of you that is, and obviously uh, Greg sits on our advisory board uh, and we're very happy to have him. He always provides an incredible amount of insight and, and how we can potentially um, spend time with you all like today. Uh, and further accelerate the ability to becoming a test bed location for many of you, either as a client or as a partner of sorts. We also have some venture capital uh, folks that are advising us uh, and some uh, economic development organizations. Next slide. So these are the very first 14 members. Some of these companies you may know, like Temex or Anterix, or um, easy metering or clear world. Uh, and then we have you know, cities and utilities, uh, GVC, San Marcos, and their utilities, city of Collin, their utilities, city of Brownsville, their utilities, and so on. We are onboarding 20 com companies right now. We just received the membership for the Autonomy Institute and the YMCA, uh, and there are many more in the making. Next slide. So we have been around since 2019 as an organization. We launched uh, our first summit in May of 2019 to test the idea and the concept and va va validate the value of prop and many hypotheses on our services. And the companies that you see there were the sponsors and keynote speakers and, and panel speakers on 2019. If you go to the next slide, on 2020, we went virtual because of COVID, obviously, like most people, but you can see uh, some of the different logos, some of the same logos as we grew uh, in this, uh, the, our conference continues to have great success and adoption. If you go to the next slide, you can see the results of the companies that keynoted, sponsored, and spoke in 2021. Uh, and we are leveraging all those relationships for onboarding 
as members into the consortium. So we expect to be at 100 members by the end of 2022, uh, and perhaps add, you know, on an ongoing basis uh, to the tune of 30 to 40 members per year. Everything we do is project based, obviously, and funded by the members. Next slide. So this is really the slide to remember about what are we focusing on. There is uh, the, the key about what we're focusing on and why we chose what we're focusing on is driven by the expertise of a significant number of faculty of the 1800 that already do research in on campus on our 32 traditional labs and seven centers of excellence. Uh, so we're ru roughly running about 340 projects related to these verticals in those labs today funded by all kinds of uh, companies. So for example, we have been doing R&D for First Solar for 10 years, uh, just to give you, you know, a, a, a name of a publicly traded successful company in the energy space and where they get help from. Um, and, uh, you know, the one key thing here to remember that is probably very important is uh, cities and utilities that join CEDAR agree contractually to uh, land their, their service territory in their infrastructure, um, roads, right-of-ways, poles, bridges, tunnels, um, telecom infrastructure, electric infrastructure, water, wastewater infrastructure, to do at a minimum of a two pilots per year uh, at large scale. So as the cities continue to join, we are basically stitching the largest playground um, known in live setting where you can actually deploy significant infrastructure covering the corridor uh, from Round Rock to San Antonio, but through the city of Seguin all the way now to Brownsville, who is one of our latest members. Uh, if you know anything about Texas, that's quite a size of a geography. Next slide. So this is the kind of the laundry list of things that, that we're covering. And, and with, you know, instead of going back to this, um, I'm gonna kind of go in and, and try to talk a little bit of some of our labs and the status of them. And we can, you know, always come back to these slides to talk about anything in particular. Again, this is just a high level list of the projects that are uh, for, the most, for the most part being funded uh, in, in, in a significant way. Uh, the list of projects uh, for the, the entire catalog is fairly large. Next slide. So we have a smart cities lab uh, that really encompasses the, an umbrella of, you know, geography and buildings, right? So the, this council is interested in smart homes. Uh, and, and, you know, when you look at the reality of that as an element of many things, uh, they all feed into what a smart city is when you think about commercial, industrial, residential buildings, and then the facilities and the services by utilities and including things like transportation. So <clears throat> this lab is open today. Uh, you can see if I can describe a little bit of what's going on there. And the building uh, and uh, the, the sort of uh, up and down, north, south concept in the screen uh, to the right side next to the parking lot is uh, where I tend to office. It's called Star One. Uh, and then we are going to build a similar building across that parking lot. This says future building. Uh, and that uh, current building is 36,000 square foot. It's a life science materials uh, incubator. Uh, we're adding the building across the parking lot, uh, it would be 60,000 square foot, and it will house our smart network software and sensors labs. It will have also co-working space for corporations. It will have uh, two corporate tenants, and it will have also uh, some 20,000 square feet for another incubator. Um, you can see the uh, building on the top left corner uh, called Infrastructure Research Lab. lab. That's our smart energy infrastructure lab. It's a $20 million building focused on civil engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, construction management. Uh, <clears throat> it will deal with you know, materials of all kind. And then it has a strong wall and strong floor for breaking big things. 
uh, you know, steel, concrete, and the like. Uh, that building is under construction right now, and it will be live and open in October. Uh, the streets that you see, the Riggle Drive and Pegasus Street, uh, are going to be um, uh, populated with the streetlights that you see. These streetlights come from one of our members, uh, Clear World. They produce LED solar power with energy storage uh, streetlights that are also connected. They have a um, um, bunch of patents in what they do. We are, uh, they joined the consortium. We're helping them with the roadmap. They envision their streetlights as an iPhone platform style thing. And we're helping them create a bunch of new apps uh, and solutions, both on hardware and software to add to the lights for all kinds of sensory, uh, environmental related and so on. Uh, obviously also things around noise and uh, and the like. Um, and the connectivity of these lights, I had, if they support today 4, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, uh, and looking at other different technologies uh, for low power wireless uh, capabilities. Um, and then you can see that uh, the, in the middle where it says McCarty Lane and demonstration homes just above, there are three little rooftops. That's going to be the destination for a competition that we're having in May, where we're going to um, reach out to developers of homes to work on our smart homes labs. And we will select three competitors. I'll talk more about that in a second. If we go to the next slide, this is what the infrastructure building and infrastructure lab will look like. This is an inside view in an outside view of that building. Again, this, this will open in October. Everything that we're building in terms of construction facilities of any size, uh, the goal of the design is to make all these uh, uh, facilities be net zero energy and um, you know, as, 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 you know, as and a water efficiency and waste efficiency as possible. Um, trying to come up with different concepts about uh, including the notion of uh, uh, in the waste space and recycling space, taking uh, you know total waste water in a in a premise and turn it into drinking water. Uh, again, evaluating all kinds of technologies, working with all kinds of partners on all the components of what a building entails. Next slide. On the smart homes lab. The crack of the, uh, the 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 goal of cracking the code here is that we are shooting a competition to begin with, and there will be more following on a thousand square foot, uh, two bedroom, two bath, net zero energy, net zero water, design and build costs at less than hundred dollars per square foot. This has never been achieved before. It's not a. This is an infill house that will be connected to utility service, so it's not a, a trailer or a, tiny home or anything like that. And, and the goal here is to really bring to bear new materials, new standards, new processes of construction that would require transformation on the codes of cities. So the cities that are joining and sponsoring the project, about seven of them right now, are very interested in that reality of the fact that they will need to adjust and learn and transform their codes. Uh, to really, you know, deliver a next generation living capabilities. Uh, obviously, inside the building, all the things you're all experts on will be part of it. The, the a concept of the $100 per square foot is just a bare bones building connected to utility facilities, right? It does not cover the cost of permits, and it does not cover the cost of the land. So, next slide. And so on the energy side, we're doing a couple things. We are using about 510 acres to develop a solar PV farm concept to pay for some of our R&D, but also to have the actual generation scale size to manage real life R&D. So uh, we are deploying this in two separate locations. One solar PV farm will be 100 megawatts and the other one will be 30 megawatts. They will be uh, integrated into brand new technology substations. And then they will be managed or they will be sort of collaborating and managing and leveraging 
two labs. The Smart Energy Lab, in, in particular, will focus in, in our ongoing journey of solar PV uh, components and sales uh, and chemistry. Uh, and uh, we will also look at, at all kinds of new things on power electronics, uh, fuel cells, energy storage, EV charging, tracking systems, energy management systems and the like, control systems, trading systems, obviously things like blockchain, and analytics, AI, ML, and even green hydrogen. So this lab in particular is really more focused on the element components of energy. Uh, and then the next slide, it's really a lab focus on the best practices of the utility in terms of delivering the power grid, right? So it's more grid management, uh, including you know metering and wires of all and components of every element of the supply chain, uh, including all the systems from distribution energy management system to things like virtual power plant. Many of you are probably very familiar with that. Uh, EV charging, obviously, a big deal in terms of V to grid or V to G, uh, as you probably are very familiar with the disruptive product that is coming up in the marketplace as the F-150 Lightning truck that is the beginning of the new dawn of how people will stop perhaps consuming energy at home uh, from the utility, charge the truck for free at work and come home and run their houses from their trucks for free. Um, and so we are going to come up with a digital substation of the future and all the big companies are very interested in that project. And how do we evolve from a, an electromechanical reality to 100% digital reality that will have a big impact on what it's the energy control room of the future and what is this like, you know, uh, power switch yard of the future. Next slide. <clears throat> We're going to build three mobility labs, uh, <clears throat> leveraging our land again at the front end of one of our 160 acres of Mula Ranch. We're, we will build in the back end 100 megawatt, I mean, a 30 megawatt, 100 acre solar farm with a substation of the future for the smart utility lab. In the front end in 60 acres, we'll start our first smart cab lab. Cab stands for connected autonomous vehicles. Uh, and we will do all the things that you see on the screen in that lab, including the notion of leveraging the pavement and the roadways for energy generation or recharging of the vehicles themselves. Next slide. We are building in partnership with many folks, including TxDOT, the Air Force, uh, Union Pacific, LCRA, and HEB, uh, an intelligent and autonomous roadway, a hundred mile round trip from a star park, which is the star on the road, on the purple road line on the very left. Uh, going through our San Marcos campus, where you have the star with the banner, uh, uh, <clears throat> maroon banner around smaller star, and then going all the way to Round Rock, which is not on the map, which is another 30 miles or so uh, the, the, that is our campus in Round Rock. So we will leverage both I-35, if you're familiar with the highways in Texas, and Highway 130. Uh, and those, this, this, these corridors are called navigation corridors. This is a, a mobility terminology for uh, uh, autonomous navigation corridors where autonomous vehicles are happening. Uh, you can see also the location of our alert center north of the airport in San Marcos. Uh, and you can see some of the <clears throat> key things that we're going to be working on uh, on the notion of, of freight delivery and logistic depots for uh, the management of connected and autonomous vehicles. This is in a partnership with uh, uh, an institution called the Autonomous Institute, uh, which is uh, one of the recent members. Next slide. We have also a, a lab that we're building at the San Marcos Airport, which is primarily a civil aviation and commercial uh, um, uh, 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 Goods, uh, trans goods transport airport. Uh, and we're getting 20 acres and two hangars. And we're going to build our smart drone VTOL lab. VTOL stands for vertical takeoff and landing, sort of the next frontier 
you're probably familiar with Elon Musk announcement of March in 2021, where he announced that a Model S like product would be a vertical takeoff and landing product. Um, you know, I can tell you that Tesla is working on it. It's, you know, sort of not in a high priority PR sense, a big thing, but they have announced it. Uh, and many other companies are working on uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. So we are building the capabilities to, again, to be a test bed uh, and having a lab to help companies figure all this out, including things like nightlife and control and traffic management and things like that. Next slide. So we have uh, an open lab called the Smart Networks Lab where we are deploying a bunch of things. Uh, we have already deployed a private LTE 5G 900 megahertz uh, network using licensed spectrum from Enterix. Uh, so we are the only university in the US that has a licensed spectrum through the FCC for that. Um, and we just deployed a LoRaWAN network that has a coverage of 80 miles uh, by putting two antennas. Uh, and you know that covers just about everything we own uh, and then some. Uh, and uh, then we are in the process of deploying uh, another uh, uh, technology with similar service territory using a technology called WirePass, which is a popular technology in Europe, and then a technology called WiSun, which is that next generation RF mesh that the smart meter guys use in the US primarily. Uh, and then we're also deploying a CBRS network in that same footprint. And then this is all, uh, uh, you know, integrated into our backbone, which is a 100 gigabit per second fiber research uh, uh, network that we are expand, expanding to touch every corner of our footprint. And we're potentially working with all the city members to leverage that network into the new grants that are coming into broadband to help uh, the acceleration of our uh, city members to have uh, full coverage of broadband in their geographies. Next slide. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next slide is our big data and software lab. And these are uh, some of the key uh, focus areas of expertise that we have faculty and students on. Um, we have, again, as I said, on campus already 32 labs and seven centers of excellence. And so we are, as we're finishing and building our nine living labs. Uh, this lab ultimately will have a, also a live living space. The biggest thing about this live living space that is kind of unique would be the combination of digital twinning and uh, XR capabilities. Um, we are actually in the process of working with all the utility and city members to build a digital twin of their entire service territories. Uh, that's one of the most daunting uh, and challenging uh, projects that we have uh, in, in collaboration with our members. And then there is clearly a lot of overlap and capabilities uh, with AR, VR, XR uh, technologies. Uh, so we are working with all kinds of companies. And obviously one of the biggest aspects of all this is always the notion of uh, cybersecurity, autonomous controls and voice controls. Next slide. And then last but not least on the labs, uh, well, second to last actually, is the notion of our smart sensors capability, our physics and chemistry expertise on building uh, unique sensors is pretty uh, spectacular. Uh, you can see the list of things that we uh, have expertise on and we work with all kinds of companies on this. I personally like the ingestible sensors. So it takes me back to that. In, you know, some of those cool movies uh, in, in the past that you had a submarine in your bloodstream. Uh, do you remember that one? Um, anyway, next slide. So the, the last lab that we are touting, which is wide open again, the, all the last labs that I show are open, the networks uh, software and uh, uh, sensors lab. It's our network operations center, security operations, Center Training Lab, and this lab in particular has the focus on helping cities and utilities and anybody who's managing hundreds of millions of things, or tens of millions of things, or learning how to do that and how to do that in a secure fashion with best practices 
and really figuring out how to reimagine uh, the challenges uh, and the restoration times of infrastructure that is, you know, self-healing, 100% machine-to-machine control, where humans are really only dealing with event management. Um, and so we have the capabilities of training folks on all kinds of things related to the grid with NERCSIP, on NIST, uh, <clears throat> with all kinds of standards around cities and, and um, other technology capabilities uh, with GDPR, and then obviously healthcare and tax and financial sensitive data. And next slide, it's our contact info. Uh, I and Dr. Stein McClellan direct this uh, uh, effort at Texas State. We have currently a team of about a couple hundred people working with us. Uh, so it's a, it's a village effort. Um, in terms of the faculty, we're working roughly with some 350 faculty right now and about 700 students. And you know, now would be a great time to entertain any questions that anybody may have. So Andres, thank you for this just amazing presentation. Um, I'm gonna say it because nobody else will. Um, <laughs> everything's big in Texas. I uh, haven't seen a, a project like this in some time where you're attacking pretty much everything from an infrastructure perspective as well as looking at the uh, at the the range effects of it all, to, to know that you can send Laura, for example, a hundred miles, and you've got the land to to prove it, that's pretty impressive. Okay, we've got some questions coming in. Um, yeah, so um, Michael uh, just kind of noted he's looking forward to working with you and Cava on on a lot of things here. How can people get involved? Yeah, that. so so we have a we have a membership uh, in a, a, you know kit that we can share with everybody. We would love to to be your partners for everybody to for you to join. Joining doesn't require you know an, an incredible uh, uh, forbidden amount of money, depending on the level of, of participation you want to have. If you are a vendor and you want to have a world class showcase at scale, this is the perfect place to put that up for for watching right when you think about uh, you know between now and december we will have probably some you know 60 to 70 significant buyers between cities utilities and enterprises that you know from with global local and regional footprint that will really uh be you know a, a great target to convince of specific technologies that you're having so so you know i'm happy to uh, share the membership kit with anybody who needs it. I'm happy to share the slides that I just uh, we just share. Martha is uh, welcome to share them with anybody who wants them. Uh, we're open for business. We're looking for you know all kinds of partners to join the, the consortium. Uh, you can be an associate member, a general member, a founding member. Uh, it's all a function of uh, what you want to do and how you want to leverage either uh, you know, we using our help to leverage uh, building and finishing things around interoperability testing, capability testing, scaling testing, of so on, or or you know helping build new products or imagining new constructs as we onboard all kinds of amazing customers. I can tell you from the um, short three years that we have been having some deep conversations before we've gone, gone live. When you think about what's going on in retail and the fight between HEV, Amazon, and Walmart, or what's going on with uh, uh, vehicles and the fight that is going on between Tesla and GM and Ford and that is coming up, or when you think about new materials in homes, it is amazing what's going on and the aptitude and the reception and the appetite from buyers of technology of how they want to see a new world and their own ideas of what the products should look like, how they should integrate, not only in, in the traditional IT sense, but also at the edge, you know, at, on, at, the, at, the, at the sort of the business level, at the user level, on the customer experience, on the ease of use leveraging smartphones and all kinds of beacons and sensor technology. Great, there are some questions uh, coming in. Um, yeah. Locale, do you have to be in Texas to get the benefits or what, what's the, 
I well, you, you, you have to join. My destination is only in Texas. I only You can be a global member. Global members are joining all kinds of global companies that, you know, there are big, big names. Uh, we are, you know, our workforce in Texas, you know, in, in a world of COVID, you, you know, an outsourced workforce that does R&D for you can be anywhere, right? So, so my workforce, my 1,800 PhDs and 40,000 students are in Texas. And my destinations on 5,100 acres are in Texas. I suspect that over time, while our initial success has been primarily Texas cities and utilities uh, and enterprises that consume technology, I think that over time, we probably will look more like a national footprint in many ways, uh, just because the benefits are tremendous. Fantastic. Uh, there's a question from Daniel Quant. Um, Who's providing CVRS networks, um, and what are the key applications you're considering for those? Well, I think I think Daniel is a it's a great member, and he he should be calling me direct to figure out how he wants to play in that. We are talking to a bunch of folks, and and things are you know in in the it's a great opportunity to, to be in the ground floor of all that work right now. Fantastic. Hey, um, one suggestion. I know that the slides are going to be going up shortly, yeah. but. Uh, Marta, can you roll back to the contact uh, page so folks can get a snap of that and reach out? Yes, sure. absolutely. Of course, it's on the uh, screen as we speak. Wonderful. Anybody have any other questions? We've got about two more minutes. And I do want to mention, uh, Jim, um, I did in the uh, chat box, I did post the link to the slides. Um, and we'll also be emailing everyone who attended today and who registered um, links to all the resources uh, that we use today. Great. Well, uh, uh, I, go ahead. Andreas, how do we bring this to the healthcare? What, what are you doing in terms of, you know, uh, um, in the areas of sensors for for the elderly in light of you know the the challenges in that area is that something that you're studying it's it's uh, it's a great question i get i get many questions with, that are not a core focus uh to be added um it, it's a it's really a matter of uh scalability and capability so it's a, a healthcare sector is not a focus today our construct uh could work on any vertical it's just we have started somewhere to you know in the in the crawl walk and runs uh, segment on, of this in our new business model and how we are connecting uh, with you know third party companies uh, to help in the future. I foresee healthcare becoming a, an additional lab fairly soon. Uh, don't have a deadline on that yet, and, but we do have expertise. We have a, one of the most dynamic nursing schools and in translation of health programs in the nation, so. Okay, now thanks, I see it even in your sensor lab that we're working on sensors and we might reach out to you, thanks. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm not alone thanking you for a wonderful presentation and uh, I think you'll definitely get a lot of response from this group. This is just a, a diverse group of, uh, of folks expertise with expertise across smart home, across building, smart buildings and all this, and this is right up your alley. So yeah, I, I would appreciate the opportunity from everybody to be consider your test bed partner, your scalability partner, your validation partner on anything you're working on. And uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, from, from you all and Greg on, and, and look forward to the journey. Thanks again. Thanks, Andres. All right, back to you, um, Eric, I think. Oh, Eric's not there. Uh, back to you, Carl. Sure. I think the next thing, and thank you very much, Andres, for that. Uh, it was really amazing. Uh, certainly very interesting, all the different areas that you're working on. Really appreciate it. Um, the next thing we were going to go to was the white paper subcommittee with uh, Ken Wax. I am here. Thank you very much. Uh, CABA, as a service to its members, uh, provides white papers that are drawn from industry and white papers that are created specifically by uh, CABA members and affiliates in the area of intelligent buildings and connected homes. I will focus on the uh, connected home papers for this group. Uh, we aim to produce uh, 
somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five papers a year, original papers by uh, CABA affiliates. The completed papers for the Connected Home Council, number one, we have the benefits of advanced lighting systems on the human experience. This is human-centric lighting and controls. Uh, this was led by uh, Chris Larry from uh, EXP uh, US Services, Inc. Uh, the paper is done. It's been posted to the CABA website. So thank you very much to the uh, committee for this work. We have a number of papers that are underway now. Uh, first of all, for our among our in progress papers are part two, power in the next slide, please. Power over ethernet, POE and digital electricity in commercial and multiple dwelling residential buildings. Uh, Louis Suau of uh, Sinclair Digital Holdings is chairing this white paper and one of the main authors. It's being subdivided into three papers. Uh, the first uh, on power over ethernet basics 2020 was completed and posted and we're awaiting further uh, papers and updates. Uh, next, we have uh, connected home cybersecurity regulations. John Devlin of uh, PAID Strategies is the chair and author. Uh, and this is another work in progress. Uh, all proposals and previous completed uh, Connected Home Council white papers are available at the website shown here. So uh, please feel free to download it and uh, help to uh, bring you up to speed on the state of the industry. And as I said, in addition, we uh, call the industry for papers that are relevant for CABA members. And this uh, is posted in the, uh, in the CABA Information Library by uh, the CABA Information Council. Uh, there, there's, uh, I think, somewhere near a thousand papers. And each one's been scrutinized to make sure it's relevant for uh, work of this committee or the Intelligent Buildings Council Committee. So uh, thank you all for those that have participated and contributed to this impressive library uh, to bring you up to speed in the industry and to determine where the uh, leading edge developments are. Great, thank you very much, Ken. Um, on that note, going to other new business, uh, and I will ask you know, the council are there new ideas for webinar topics, uh, white paper ideas that uh, anyone would like to bring up for discussion? Uh, I sent Marta a proposal. One of the things that, uh, this is David, I presented sure. on is the building envelope. So we can focus on the HVAC equipment, the energy management systems, but in order to improve or to get it to net zero, we have to look at the building envelope. And there's some technologies that I've studied and uh, have research on that I could present on. Sounds great. One, one thing that I know uh, in my company, we've certainly discussed a lot, uh, the infrastructure bill that recently passed. Um, it, it seems so huge. There's a lot of different implications, definitely for utilities, but also for sustainability in buildings. I, I don't, you know, we've just looked into it, but I don't know if that would be something that would uh, interest the council if, uh, you know, are there new incentives in that for connected homes? Any others? Okay, then I think we're ready for the next uh, slide talking about uh, events. Greg, if you could yeah. uh, speak to uh, CES. 
Yeah, yeah. I just uh, so see. I went to CES this year. It seemed to be a, a, a fairly fairly well received event, um, and uh, it, it wasn't quite at the same level as it was in the past. But uh, it was still a general consensus. It was it was, it was worthwhile, and uh, and then there was also the Connections uh, Summit that was there um, at that event as well. And in the upcoming events, we also have Cedia. Um, the, the date's coming up soon. Uh, I think it's September, and uh, then there's another connections event in, in May. Um, maybe I see I see Elizabeth Parks. Uh, you're on the on the call. If you wanted to say a few words about uh, about connections at CES and and maybe the upcoming one, if you're if if you're available. Hey, Greg. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for um, asking about connections. The CES event went really well. We had a great, great crowd despite lots of changes and we're actually hosting our Smart Energy Summit in person at the end of February in the Dallas area. And then our 26th annual Connections Conference we will host in person in May, also in Texas. Lots of great things going on in Texas this year. So our call for papers is open if anybody's interested in submitting to speak. And um, if you're not familiar with our events, um, it's parksassociates.com. And, and we love talking about technology in, in the home and bringing leaders together. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of the premier events in the connected home space. I've been to a couple of them and, and Ken's have some positive things to say as well. But uh, so it's good to check them out. So if we, I guess next here is just the CD event coming up in September and then another connections event in, in May. So the, the CD one is September 29th to October 1st. And uh, I, I anticipate that one will be a, a little bit more well received than the than the last year's one. Maybe Greg, could you talk things. about connections real quick? Just what, what to expect there? Um, well, this is a, yeah, this is a Elizabeth Parks event. And, uh, and ba basically it's, it's focused around uh, research in, uh, in the connected home space. They have a lot of, they have really strong panelists and, uh, and from, from the industry, some key thought leaders. And then they, they focus on some of the research that they have um we're not directly affiliated with them per se but uh um but we work with them in the past and uh but they do they give some some good snippets and uh, of of useful data that they've done for some of the research projects and then they, they even do some on live polling at their at their events on the uh for those that are attending so uh, um i heard the, the the connections one at ces was like standing room only so it's was, it was, it was pretty popular great thank you Greg, I might add, I just see there's a uh, wellness and health event that is new in Toronto, and I might send you the link. I think it fits our agenda. Yeah, for sure. That would, that would be uh, definitely, if you have any other upcoming events, this is definitely not this is an exhaustive list. Um, but uh, if you have any other key events that we should be aware of, we'll definitely post them. We have events posted on our events page, uh, endorsed events and non-endorsed events. And uh, for those that are interested in some of the ones in the calendar that are coming up. Thanks. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Really enjoyed the meeting. Uh, loved the uh, the presentation. Um, the next CHC meeting, Tuesday, May 17th. Um, unless there are any questions, I was going to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. OK. Go for lunch. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.